Hi, good afternoon, everyone. We want to welcome you all back to our third Pangongo Samoa workshop series. Hello. Hello, Sunny. Hello, TJ and Josiah and Jessica. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to have Talavo share our agenda for the day. For the afternoon. Okay, so today we are going, we just did our welcome. And then we're going to go over the song of the week, which is the song of Fonuea. Oh, before that, we're going to do Sululo Ia Lava Lava, which will welcome back Miss Alicia to show us a reminder of how to tie our Lava Lavas, which everyone should be wearing today. Uh, then we'll go over the song of the week so you can grab your upuleles out. Hopefully you have them all tuned and ready to go, especially for our returning friends. Um, number four, we're gonna go over the legend of turtle and shark, one version of the legend. And then the fifth item on our list, we're going to welcome the amazing returning Pango Samoa cast and crew members, our um, Miss Mary Selena and Elena Lene, who will be sharing with us today about the regalia of Samoan Taupo. After that, we're gonna go over our quote of the week, our Ngana Samoa words of the week, using your calendar and your Polynesian coloring book. And then we're gonna go over some reminders and announcements, and then we'll be all done. Not too bad, right? Um, first, let's go take a look at our online virtual art gallery and see what we have if anybody has added some new artwork. That's on the next slide, we can click on that. So again, there is the link that we can add in the chat of the Padlet online gallery for all of you who are using, you can add your coloring books, you can add your illustrations of the weekly Fangongo uh, that we learned. And then we will be sharing it the following week. So for those of you who are joining us on Zoom, we have the link to the Padlet online. All right, looks like we got some more stuff going on there. We have two Isumus that look fairly similar but also unique in spirit. Oh, then we also have uh, two of the coloring book pieces from Mr. Jaden Malinga Falesoa. Thank you so much. He has his coloring sheet from week one and then also a coloring sheet from week two. Those are awesome, bright and vibrant colors. We also have two fe'ez that are in our gallery this week. So again, we wanna remind all of our friends who are joining us, you can add on your artwork as well by visiting the Padlet site and just uploading the photo. All right. Next, we're going to be welcoming- Hey guys, so, hi guys, I'm Alicia again, and I'm gonna show you guys how to tie your ear. Again, so as last time, I'm gonna show you guys two different methods. So the first one I'm gonna show you guys is a simple tie. So you wanna grab both ends of your ear, and then you just wanna pull it to one side of your body. And then you want to take the two corners and you want to form, and then you want to rotate like one underneath and create a knot and then tie it. Turn around. And version number two. Okay, so then the next one that I'm going to show you guys is like, it's basically like a, a tuck, like a fold over tuck thingy. So you want to do like the same thing as, as the last one. And just hold the two corners out and then you want to take whichever side the left or the right side corner of it and then you just want to pull one side in and then take the other side and then just tuck it in and turn around for us thank you miss alicia you want to make sure that it's tight though and each week we are gonna be remembering to come to the workshop wearing your lava lava. Even though we can only see your top half, we still would like you to wear your lava lava, which if you received a free supply kit, 
your lava lava is the blue material that's inside of your bag. All right, thank you, Miss Alicia. Next, we're gonna ask Talavo to share our song of the week. So as um, Talavo pulls that slide up, if you wanna grab your ukulele so you can strum along. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome back to the Fungongo Workshops. If you don't know me, my name is Pua. Um, I am the song leader for every workshop. So today, the song we'll be singing is um, Lao Mei Fayanga. So the chords we'll be using are G and D. So G is like a triangle. So one, two, three. And then D is the top three strings on the second bar. So D, this is the best way you can hold it, easy. Um, so now I'll start by singing the song. enjoyed um please go follow us on instagram and tiktok instagram is someone solutions tiktok is someone solutions dot official um we will have that song posted on tiktok please go duet us and show us what you learned thank you all right welcome back friends so hopefully because this week there was only two chords which were g and d for the song of the week it won't be too difficult for all of our friends to catch along. Again, the video of the song of the week will be posted on our YouTube channel. And so it will also be posted on our TikTok so you can practice during the week and then do what Miss Seipua and share it, share your progress with us. So right now we're gonna go through the legend of the week, which is the legend of the turtle and the shark. Long ago, on the island of Savai, there lived a couple. The wife was called Ponuwe, and due to the fact that her husband was easily forgotten about, no one was able to recall his name. The pair were very much in love. One day, the man returned from work and with news that he would be sent on a duty to King Maliatoa Fainga, a duty of which he will never be able to return. The couple decided to run away from the king. They sailed off to the island of Tutuila, where they arrived upon the shores of Baikomi. The couple were met by High Chief Letuli, who cared for the couple and spread his hospitality over Fonuea and her husband. The two lived in Tutuila for months. They were happy there, but their peace was short-lived as they feared that sooner or later, the secret of their disappearance would be revealed, resulting in misfortune and dishonor to Letuli and their family. To ensure the safety of their loved ones, the couple decided they would sacrifice their lives. They leapt off the cliffs of Aitongi into the vast ocean. As their bodies hit the water, instead of dying, they began to transform. Fonuea transformed into a turtle and her husband into a shark. The couple was safe from the king's anger and so were their loved ones. To this day, when the villagers of Aitongi sing the song from the cliffs of 
Honue and a turtle, a turtle and shark come to the surface. And that was the song that was just featured as our song of the week. This week in your word bank, we have some new words just for this week. The first one is Lao Mei. The English translation of that is turtle. The next word is Malie. The English translation of that is shark. The next word is Matai. The English translation for high chief. And the last one is Vaitomi, which is a wonderful village on the island of Tutuila. How are you doing there, friends? <laughs> so if you're wondering where the legends are, you can follow along with us through the Fangongo Samoa workshop series. If you don't have a binder such as this, then you can also follow along by downloading your own PDF version of it. And the link is www.tinyurl.com forward slash Fangongo packet. We can go ahead and put these off to the side. So today, instead of having an interactive workshop, we are going to actually have all of our friends observing. We are going to be sharing about the Samoan regalia that is worn by our Taupo. Polavo, can you share our slides for today, please? We can put them up <laughs> the Samoan Taupo, this is a photo of her that's a drawing. She is typically the daughter of a high chief and she represents the village in formal functions. And one that's most known to a lot of people is the Samoan Siva. So she dances for the village and what we call the closing of an event, which is called a Tawalunga. So the different types of regalia or see different parts of her, of her outfit. We're going to start from the top to the bottom. The very top is her headdress, which is called a tuinga. The Samoan headdress is made up of different parts. The first part, you can see where the arrow is pointing, is called the lave. The next part is called the laulu, which is traditionally hair from the family that is used to make the piece. The next part, is a part that wraps around her forehead. We call that the pale fuyono. And then it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see right next to her ear is part um, D, which is the se fulumoa. Thank you for our friends. Yeah, let's go ahead and circle that. So can we have a circle around the lave, please? That's that part up there. Circle kids or just there we go and then the laulu let's show our friends where that part is and that's just sort of like the hair portion of it you'll have a better view once we walk through it live and then we're going to move down to the pale fuyono, can you just kind of highlight where that is? That's again, the piece that is worn on across your forehead. Can we have a circle on the pale fuyono, please? And then the actual pale, right there. And then moving down to our Taupo's neck, she wears typically a necklace, which we would call a ula nifo. Oftentimes you will see what she, the accessory she wears around her neck layered with natural feathers from the island. Sometimes it's also layered with other uh, traditional Samoan necklaces, one of them being made of kukui nuts, which some of you may have seen before, some of those go nuts uh, necklaces that are around. Next, we have the Taupo's Taulima, 
which are adornments that are worn on her arms. Some of the times those are made out of ipupopo. Other times it's made out of natural leaves, such as tea leaves that are tied to decorate the Taupo's arms. The next portion, moving on down to the waist, is the kiki. This is somewhat of a belt type accessory, and it's worn around the waist, made out of kulumoa. So in English, that means feathers or ula shells that make up necklaces that create a band around her waist. See that? And then the next part of her opu or outfit is what is tied around her body. So we call that in this, in this demonstration, it's called the opukonga and it's made out of ietonga, which is in English means fine mats or sometimes siapo, which in English is tapa cloth. We take the fine mat or the tapa and we wrap it and tie it around the entire body. At times you may see a taupo who uses a layered technique of both siapo and ietonga at the same time. And the one of the very last pieces is all the way down. I'm not quite sure if you can see it, hopefully you can, but um, our taupo also has a ankle accessory, which at times is very similar to the taulima. We call that a kalvai, and it's made out of the same material, sometimes popo, sometimes it's uh, made out of different nuts or shells, again, to just accessorize our taupo. A couple of other things that I'm just going to highlight in this photo that this taupo also has is she has, she is holding in her hands what is known to the Samoan people as the nifo oti. That is a weapon of death. Oh, <laughs> thank you for the highlight. So often she used the nifo oti while she dances. And then the second part that we're going to highlight is the Taupo's traditional tattoo. So you can see that right below her ofukonga, you can see on her legs that this Taupo has the women's tattoo, which some of you might remember from week one. You can share that in the chat if you know what that's called. If not, we'll just tell you right now, it is called a malu. Again, the word for the female's traditional tattoo in Samoan is called a malu. Next slide, please. So here in this slide, you'll see the original photo, which is in black and white. This is of a Samoan taupo from the 1900s. And you can see that she's pretty much dressed in our traditional attire from head to toe. Her ofu is made out of that layered technique. You can see all the way on the photo on the a little closer look at it, where she's wearing both siapo and ikonga layered over one another. All of the materials that are used to create the attire for the Samoan taupo are natural items that are found in the islands of Samoa and a lot of our other Pacific islands. So you'll see a lot of feathers, a lot of leaves. We use the laofala, which is used to create uh, kikis. We also use that to make our fine mats. And a lot of natural flowers as well. So you'll see that the taupo on the left-hand side has also a necklace that looks as if it's made out of flowers across her neck. Next slide. Next and here's a closer look at each, uh, some different outfits that are worn by our Samoan Taupo. The first image shows a uh, ula nipo. The bodice is made out of the traditional Samoan yetonga. And she also features the 
kiki that's made out of feathers. The picture on the opposite side also features a head, the headdress, which is the Samoan Tsuinga. And it looks as if this uh, Tsuinga is actually a modified version, which is what some, of, some people use today just because it's a little bit more convenient than piecing together all the different pieces. So that Tsuinga looks as if it's made to be one piece and just an entire hat. So it easily just sits right on top of the Taupo's head. You just put it on and take it right off. Her bodice is made of, of a Iatonga as well. It looks like there may be some layered Iatonga on there. She's wearing a Ula Nifo made out of popo, which is coconut shell. And it looks like this Taupo also has a kiki made out of shells as well as laupala. And in the middle is a wonderful photo with both Taupo and Maanaya standing side by side. You have a look at the uh, Maanaya, which are the men in the photo. Both of them are bearers of the tattoo. So they each have their own Songai Miki. They're also featured here with a koko or a talking staff and a fue, which is the piece that is hanging on the shoulder of each of the men. The men are also wearing the traditional talking chief's ula. So that's that red ula there that some people say, oh, that looks like chili peppers. Yeah, that is a traditional Samoan ula fala. And then our beautiful taupo in the middle, both of those ladies, they all have the different aspects that we shared earlier of a taupo. She's wearing the twinga fao. Both of them are wearing a swing of fowl headdress. Moving down to their neck, they have a necklace of feathers. Typically the feathers that are utilized in Samoan regalia are the Senga feathers. They also have a ula nifo that is on top of their feathers. And then their bodice is made up of iatonga. And then they have a shell titi or shell belt around the waist. So right now you're in for a treat because we're going to welcome our Taupo for the day, who is also a Fangungo Samoa alumni. She's a two year cast member, the beautiful and wonderful Miss Elena and her amazing mother who's been on crew for Fangungo Samoa for the last two years. And what they're going to do today is they're gonna show you how tricky it can be to install a twinga fowl, which is the Samoan head. Elena is wearing a traditional Samoan outfit and she's only missing one piece, which is her headdress. And the headdress, as we mentioned, is uh, entitled the twinga. I'm gonna ask for Alicia to come over. Miss Alicia, can you come help us for just a second? Elena, can you step up just a little bit closer to the camera? You can see on Elena's forehead, she's wearing, she's wearing a palefuyono. I'll go in a little bit closer. And her palefuyono is made out of shells. Quite simple. Shells that are attached to a traditional base, and we just tie it around her forehead. Moving on down, our taupo neck piece is a ulangifo, which is made out of circular popo shells, as well as, now it's sort of a modified version of teeth, but that's right there. And it's sitting on top of a wonderful, beautiful, feather necklace. Her body also is made up of yotonga, just one lovely piece. And she's wearing a kiki fulumo, as well as a siapo kiki that's layered today. Thank you, Miss Elena. So 
today she's going to we're going to be showing you how to install a tuing of file on Miss Elena's head. We're gonna ask her to go ahead. It might be a, just a little bit difficult today because typically, let me show you her top button. Typically, we have a little bit uh, different material that we use to tie around her fa'faku, which in English that means bun. Um, but today we had to improvise just a bit because guess why? Yeah, because we forgot the material. Okay, so <laughs> that's all. So it might be a little bit harder for us to. So this first piece that Marita is holding is called, anybody in the chat? Anyone know? No? You need some help? It's called the lave. The alave is attached to the fa'afaku, which again, in English, fa'afaku is ban. <laughs> I'm gonna come in and help. So what we're doing is tying the lave to Ms. Elena's fat We have to make sure that it's quite secure. By using multiple material, we're able to ensure that the lave is tied on firmly. As those of you who are here in the beginning may remember, our Taupo is expected to dance the village dance, which is why it's so important that the Tuminga is on firmly. Okay. So our first piece is already assembled. The next part is our laulu, which hold on one second. So first we're gonna show our friends at home. The laulu again is the hair, traditionally hair from the family member that is held in place today using by the support help of string. Do we want to get a little closer? Okay, so this is the laulu. In English, laulu is The laulu as well is tied to the lava. This part being the lava. So it might be a tad bit difficult to see on the lobby, but if you can, right here, there are six that go horizontally and six that are vertically. The horizontal six are what we use to tie each different section to the to the lobby. If you're at home, you want to give us some thumbs up or hit the like and love button for our wonderful and patient telco, Miss Elena. We continue to add the laulu. Which allows for the Twinga to look a whole lot fuller. Again, each piece is securely tied to the lobby. 
For those of you who can see, the lava is typically made of traditional shell, feather, held together by sticks and wood pieces. On here, on this specific lava, we can see some abalone shell. We have some coconut shell that's also been added. We have some small CC shells that are here in these areas. All of which help to identify our Taupo from far away. In our diagram, it's known as the Fa'ila pieces of the lava. Again, each of these pieces, the laulu, as well as the lava, is tied to the being secured by these horizontal pieces of stick. On the okay, and then you do some fluffing as you see Ms. Teresa doing here. And we're going to add the last piece of her traditional head here, which is known as the anyone, anybody, anybody, the Seifurumoa. That sits right on top of our laulu. And it's made out of feathers. And there you have it, friends. Miss Elena's entire tuing of fowl is now installed, and our beautiful Taupo is ready for a Siva. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> Which our Lovely Taupo today did not sign up for, so we will not put her on the spot, huh? <laughs> but as you can see, you can see all the different pieces, starting from the piece that is across her forehead, known as the palifuyono, again, made of natural shells and different shiny things of the ocean and the land of Samoa. Moving on up, we have the foundation of the Tuinga, which is the lave that is made up of sticks, shells, and feathers of the Pacific. We add then the laulu, which is the hair portion, little tufts of hair that are tied and secured tightly to the lave. Again, secured to the horizontal sticks of the lave. And our last, piece of our tuinga pao is the Sei Fulumoa that sits nicely atop of the laulu. Can we move our, we're gonna move back just a bit so you can see a fuller version. And for those of you who remember or who may need a reminder, the tuinga fowl, the foundation or the hairstyle that you start with for your hair is called a fa'apaku, known to our American friends and English speakers as a bun. So you tie your hair up into a knot. If you are a friendly person who does not have hair to tie, then you can improvise using material. So you would create your own bun out of material. And that is what we use to secure the lava to create this wonderful piece today. We're going to ask our Taupo if she would like to stand for one last look of her entire outfit. 
carefully stand with the help of mom. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Elena. So we're gonna walk around again from the head all the way down to the toes. Our Taupo is ready for her village obligations. One of the last adornments that we usually add to our wonderful Taupo is on her cheeks. We take the ash and create what is known as Auka. Those are the two marks that you see Samoan women adorn on the side of their, each side of their cheek. Her outfit again is created out of Piatola, Samoan traditional fine mat. Her waistband known as the Kiki is created out of Kiki Fumwa, as well as the Kiki Siapo, which is a Kiki of Tapa cloth. Thank you so much, Miss Elena. Round of applause, hearts, and fire in the chat for our lovely Elena. <laughs> hey guys. Oh, I'm not gonna that. Um, I'm going to be reading the calendar again, but like my mom said, this is the calendar that you guys have and you guys, that you guys got in the first drop off in the blind is Saturday, April 10th. And the first word of to, or the first word that I'm going to be reading is Ngalu, which is to work. The next word will be for Sunday, which is Mona'o, which is to want or to need. Then for Monday, it will be ta, which is to strike or to hit. For Tuesday, it will be fupole, which is to worry. For Wednesday, it will be fufanga, which is to feed or recharge. For Thursday, it's gonna be to lay, which is to push. For Friday, it's gonna be toso, to pull. And lastly, for Saturday, it will be Siva, which is to dance. Can we go over those words one more time? You don't have to say the English translation, but just say our Psalm one words starting from Saturday. Okay. For Saturday, Ngalu. Ngalue. 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 All our friends at home, the word is Ngalue, which means work. Continuing on. Mana'o for Sunday. For Monday, ta. For Tuesday, fupole. For Wednesday, fufanga. For Thursday, to lay. For Friday, toso. For Saturday, siva. Thank you. Hey, y'all. It's Aaliyah again. Um, grab y'all's Polynesian coloring book. And flip the pages to this one. See right here, the beautiful picture that you guys can color in with your markers and art supplies that we gave to y'all in your baggies. Yeah. And the quote of the week says, as a Polynesian, our gods are tied to water. So this means something special. By the one, the only Jason Momoa. If y'all know Aquaman, Thumbs up for Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'll read it one more time. As a Polynesian, our gods are tied to water. So this means something special. Yeah. And don't forget to color in this coloring page, beautiful turtle and the shark. And then um, upload it to the Padlet. Padlet that we have to show off your awesome art skills. And yeah, the joke of the week, everyone's favorite part. So why do turtles and sharks swim in salt water? Why? Because if they swam in pepper water, they would sneeze too much. <laughs> 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 That's just 
folks for my section. I know. I hope you guys got some laughs and giggles. And yeah, see you next week. Okay, friends, we want to thank you for joining us again this week for the third week. Third or third? <laughs> third, right? <laughs> third Pangungo Samoa workshop. Um, we do have a couple of questions, Aliyah from Anson and also from Lola. If you can please, let's get their questions. If you want to go ahead and add it in the chat, that'd be great. While we get your questions, we just want to go over a couple of announcements for the week. Announcement number one is that we will be back next Saturday for Fangongo Samoa. Workshop number four. Announcement number two is that today is actually our first rehearsal for the production of Fangongo Samoa, the play. So those of you who are going to be joining us for the Fangongo Samoa rehearsal today, we will be at, in Daly City conducting our social distance uh, rehearsal at Gellert Park. Again, that's in Daly City. Gellert Park. We'd love for you to join us, join our cast and crew this year as we have an array of new Fangongo or Samoan legends that we're going to be featured in this year's production. The next announcement that we have is a reminder for all of the Samoan students of Samoan descent in the nine San Francisco Bay Area counties. If you are a middle school student, a high school senior continuing into college or a high uh, college transfer student who lives in the San Francisco Bay Area, you may be able to win yourself some financial support through the Lumanai Education Gift. Our application process closes this Monday. So that's Monday the 12th, I believe. Monday the 12th, the way that you submit your application is online. You can just ask my wonderful tripod here to stop moving. Thank you, tripod. <laughs> you know her <laughs> as the word of the week gal and your lava lava gal. That's Alicia. Um, come with me. Uh, so the Illuminati education gift, we also have a section for our amazing artists. So that's called the Illuminati art gift. And you can apply if you are a middle school sixth grader all the way through high school, you create a multimedia art piece, submit it, a photo of it online and accompany it with a short narrative describing to us your piece. So that's announcement number two. Announcement number three, we just wanted to share for some of our um, older participants, a couple of books that might be helpful for you if you want to dive deeper into Fangongo Samoa or Samoan legends and stories. The first book that I have here is written by author Fofo Sunia. It's available on Amazon in both English and Samoan. And it is entitled Samoan Legends of Love and Courtship Among Kings and Chiefs. I'm gonna show that one more time. This is the English version of this book that tells of tales, all of our some or a good amount of Samoan legends that deal with marriages, love, the presentation of wives to the village and to different chiefs. And it's a wonderful start for those of you who are looking for some additional content to read up on another great and amazing tool for you, for those of you, this is actually for anyone, is to get yourself a Psalm 1 dictionary. You can purchase them again on Amazon. And there are versions that are like this one, which is Psalm 1 to English. But there are also versions that are English to Psalm 1. So for those of you who do not have a Psalm 1 dictionary, you can purchase that online as well. It's quite difficult to find literature in our own, written by our own people. So we just wanna make sure that we share these um, wonderful gems. This next one is called, right there. The Samoan Proverbial Expressions, Alangauhu Samoa. 
This is a collection not written by, um, not um, curated by our people, but by Dr. E. Schultz. But it also is a great way for you to learn more about Proverbs, Psalm 1 Proverbs. It's written in Psalm 1, translated in English. And it's a great way for you to start. Okay. I believe that we have a few more, um, we have just a few more announcements that this week we weren't able to play our announcement video in the beginning, but we'll play it for you right now. Again, with a couple of reminders for our participants, go ahead and complete your artwork during the week and share it on our virtual gallery via the Padlet link. Practice your ukulele playing throughout the week. Check out the videos from Ms. Seipua on YouTube if you need a reference. If you're into TikTok and you want to do that TikTok stuff, go ahead and duet us on our TikTok page. And then last but not least, practice your nganana Samoa upo vayaso. I know it might seem kind of challenging, but it's not impossible, right? So with that, we're going to say a farewell or tofa to all of our participants this week. Thank you so much for continuing to come back. We want to ask you to invite your friends. They might not be able to have cool supply kits like you do, but they can still come along for the ride, right? Uh, oh, one of our last announcements before we head to our video is that we will be doing a second drop for the San Francisco Unified School District students of supplies. That supply drop will be sometime in May. So right now you will have, you currently have all of the supplies you need to continue on to our work with our workshops until May. I believe next week, we're gonna welcome the lovely uh, drumming crew of Leala Dance Company. So you get to put those wood blocks and drumming sticks to use next week. Do we have um, our questions from Lola?